In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up one of our TAP systems. Now, it's important to note this is for demonstration purposes of our equipment only. This equipment has been fully tested, has a code of practice, and is going to be set up to code. So this is a demonstration video for dry high collections of our equipment only. If you're installing draft equipment, we always recommend, especially in a commercial environment, that you use a certified, qualified technician to install the equipment. Firstly, take your gas bottle and make sure it's secure. In this instance, we have a gas chain. However, in most scenarios, you won't have this. What we recommend doing is either cable tying the bottle to a table leg or make sure it's well out of the way of public use. Tuck behind the cooler or in between kegs, but anywhere where basically it cannot fall over. Next, we will supply you with a primary regulator and a secondary regulator. It's important to note that we check our regulators to make sure they're in date. So if you're watching this video, make sure the regulators have a COP date on the back that's well within date. So take the regulator and attach it to the gas bottle. Take a spanner and do it up nip tight. Do not over tighten it as it could damage the O-ring inside. If you're hiring a system from us, we will provide you with spare O-rings attached to the regulator board in case this ever happens. You will know that it's damaged as when you turn the bottle on, it will leak gas out of here. Next, take your gas line. Now your gas line can be in multiple colors, but for this purpose, we are using mixed gas. So we have a white line and put it straight into the secondary regulator output. Next, take your coupler and connect the gas line to the gas inlet on the side. Next, take some product line and attach the product line to the product outlet of the coupler. Next, take the same product line and attach it to the cooler going into one of your first inlets. Now you need your tap, so take the tap and clamp it to the surface. Make sure your tap is nice and secure. So keep in mind when you're pulling pints, you will put a lot of force pulling on the tap. So with the tap, you'll have a product line and you'll probably have two recirculation lines. Not all taps have recirculation lines, but all they do is send up cooling water right the way through to the tap nozzle to keep the product cool all the way up the python. You also on some of them have a spare product line if you're attaching a second tap up the other end. So what you want to do is feed your python to wherever it may go. So it might go behind the bar, through some holes, wherever it may be. But in this case, we're going to go straight down. So you're going to take the product line and you're going to attach it to the outlet of the cooler. So in this instance, we have double chilled through the cooler to make sure the product is nice and cold. So in other words, we've gone in the cooler, out the cooler, back in the cooler, and now we're going out up to the tap. So we simply need to attach that line like that. And then we need to take the two recirculation lines and attach them to the water recirculation out of the cooler. This is what pumps the cold water around the system. Next, we need to fill up the water cooler. This takes about 10 liters of water. So you fill it up from the top here until it comes out of the overflow here. We recommend putting a drip tray below to catch all the excess water. Next step, once your cooler is full of water and you've made sure that all the fittings are nice and pushed in, plug it in. When your cooler is on, you'll hear a slight humming noise, which is the fan going round. This will turn down over a certain amount of time, usually about half an hour to half an hour later when it's reached a certain temperature. Just make sure you double check there aren't any leaks from the water recirculation. The next thing is to hook the keg up. Now there is a video on our info section of the website that shows you how to change kegs and hook kegs up. So in this instance, I'm simply just going to attach it. Now we're gonna turn the gas on and make sure there are no leaks. You should be able to hear leaks if there are any. If you do hear a leak, please turn the gas off straight away and call us for technical advice. So now we just need to pull the product through. You want to pull the product through to it stop splurting, just to make sure we get all of the air out of the system. With lager taps, we have the flow controls here, which are simply connected up to the loom. The flow control simply controls the flow of the tap. You can actually open it or close it. This is important because it will adjust how quickly the product comes out of the tap. So basically it will help you with fobbing. If it's coming out too fast, it will fob or foam up your product. Once your cooler's been on for about 45 to 60 minutes, your product should be cool enough to pour. So grab yourself a glass, 
put it at a 45 degree angle, tipping the nozzle to the end of the glass, and pour. We're only about halfway, gradually tilt the pint away. Now with Guinness, we have to pour it up to about a third of the way and let it settle. Now if you're unsure and you've got a branded tap, just so you know, the instructions are always printed on the front side here. Here's one of our lager taps in action. Here are some typical kegs that we supply. Here's our 30 litre kegs, 50 litre kegs, and 20 litre kegs. Most beers, or craft beers, come in 30 litre kegs. Most mainstream beers come in 50 litre kegs, with a few offering the optional 30 litre size. And most other products, such as Prosecco and cocktails, come in these 20 litre recyclable kegs. So when you're actually buying a keg, you buy the product that's inside the keg, and then the container belongs to the brewery. So if we drop you a keg, as long as it makes its way back to a approved wholesaler, that's absolutely fine, or we can collect it for you.